Hey, uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial on two things which I wanted to cover. Number one is webbing ladders, and the other is installing a zip. So, prerequisites to this involve having a zip and some fabric. So, the first thing that you want to do is obviously mark your fabric. In this case, I'm going to do the webbing ladder first. So, obviously, I know where I'm going to put this you're going to put it somewhere else, depending on where it needs to be. This is um, for a bar bag, in case you were wondering. I am a bit ill today, so apologies if I sound congested and horrible, but can't really help it. So the piece of material I use for the bar bag is 25 centimetres wide. So I'm just marking every five centimetres. That's going to give me a guide of where I want to sew. I've also got a piece of webbing cut that is just out of shot. Uh, yeah, so that's going to go there. That's going to get stitched on. Right, so that's, that's marked for the webbing ladder. Now to do the zip, what I do is I just mark a centimetre away from the edge and I will do this to both sides of fabric as I'm going to be stitching it on both sides. Hopefully you can see okay, I've got two cameras running today so I'm going to try to flip in and out of them in post. So again, on this one, just marking a centimetre from the edge. This is the easy bit. Like I said in the previous video, zips used to petrify me, but now I just, I just don't mind. You just get used to them. So that's the fabric marked. I'm going to take this over to the machine now and uh, show you the next step. Okay, so I've got my uh, webbing ladder ready, I've got my zip ready. So I'm going to start with the webbing ladder. I've got two cameras on the go again, so hopefully I'll be able to flip between them and you'll see what I'm doing. So with this one, um, I've got an adjustable speed on my machine, so I'm just slowing my machine down a bit. It basically it's the same as not quite pressing as hard on the pedal. So I just go uh, five stitches in each direction and then move on to the next, next part. So then just line it up. I knew that was going to happen. Just line it up. And then one, two, three, four, five. So I normally go back and forth uh, two or three times, depending on whereabouts on the project I am. So this works for, in this case, bar bags, and be the same for a stem bag. You might have seen frame bags, which have got the like a full webbing ladder. I think um, Alpkit do theirs with a full webbing ladder. The reason I don't do mine like that is because it's so time consuming. You can actually get machines that do it for you, but I don't have the room or money to buy a bar tacking machine, so I do them all by hand, which means it becomes a bit of a pain to do a metre and a bit of bar tacking. You know, this is 25 centimetres and it takes a minute or so. Doing a metre is just a nightmare. Uh, I got to the end, so I just flip it around. That way I always keep the edge of my foot on the edge of the material. And on this one, I normally just go back and forth twice because it's going to get stitched all the way around. So I'll just pull that, clip it. Uh, I'll do that one as well, just so I can sew the zip in. So as I said the other day, I, um, I used to be petrified of zips. I always forget which way round they go. doesn't really matter. Uh, I know there is a correct way for the tape to be facing, 
but I'm just going to stitch this one in because the bar bag can kind of open in either direction. So what you want to get is you want to get the edge of your zipper tape and the edge of your fabric. You want to line them up. Uh, put your needle through, that makes sure everything stays in place. Now you don't need to be super accurate with any of this stuff. Obviously you want to keep it as close as possible, but it doesn't need to be inch perfect, millimeter perfect. You can be off a little bit. Especially as the nature of the nature of the zip is that things are going to stretch and move and nothing will ever line up perfectly. So I'm just going to go, I've turned my machine up a little bit, I'm just going to go all the way down. So stopping periodically just to make sure that it's all lined up. And then clip those. Now hopefully my lighter is around here somewhere. No, typically I cannot find it. No. So then the next step is to fold the tape back on itself. So fold the tape back on itself and then you're using that line that you made in the first step as a guide. So you want to pop that down again, put the needle through. Um, with VX21 you're quite fortunate you can kind of fold the whole material. If you're using something like cotton then it might not do that, it might not hold the fold quite as well. Um, so now I'm going to do a quick back stitch. So I normally do three stitches forward, three stitches back, and then I will run the whole length down, and then again three back, quick back stitch at the end. So just get that lined up, and then just keeping the edge of the edge of the foot lined up with the edge of the fabric. So now it's just a case of doing the other side. So going face down, get that lined up with approximate, you want to get it as close to here as possible. Again, nature of hand cut fabric and so on, it's going to be tricky. I also try and line up this, this far edge so you can tell that it's kind of going to be at least mainly square. So needle through, obviously I'm ignoring all this excess thread. Stitch all the way down again. This is where you'll see some difference. So if you look at that there, that's not quite lined up, but generally speaking, that won't be an issue. So just snip that off. I'm going to snip a couple of these off as well, just because they're getting in the way a little bit. I will go back and finish all these off with a lighter, but I don't know where it is right now, and I probably should have found it before I started the video, but never mind. Um, again, thread just come out, typically. And just re-thread that needle. So, needle through, folding it back all the way. Just folding on that line, making sure that you're as close to it as possible. Quick back stitch and then all the way down. And that is a zip pretty much installed. Obviously, you have to install a zip puller on, on it, and I normally put tabs either end so it can be opened a bit easier so you can hold on to it when you're wearing gloves. But that is essentially how you install a zip. So not too scary. Uh, the webbing ladder is very straightforward. That's just being conscious of your stitching, uh, learning to control the machine, that kind of stuff. But hopefully you can watch this video and start putting zips in things. So hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.